Most of us never learned how to train our brains, which is why most of us needlessly settle, struggle, and worse, suffer. My name is Chris Doris, and I want to make brain training mainstream. This is my series, Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I'm interviewing badasses from all walks of life on what mental toughness means to them and their unique approaches to strengthening their minds. John Hunter is one of our guest today. John is a worldwide head of sales for um, digital service management at a company called BMC. So BMC, it's enterprise software, software industry. 10,000 customers worldwide, uh, most of whom are Fortune 500, or at least, the, I guess, like 80% yep. of Fortune 500 are your customers. It's a big company, 6,500 employees about. Headquartered in Houston, about $2 billion in revenue per year. Prior to uh, BMC, John was uh, executive VP of worldwide sales at OpenText. We did a, a couple gigs up in uh, Montreal where the headquarters is. And uh, prior to that, you were with CA for 18 or 19 years. That's right. <laughs> uh, CA Technologies, and uh, I mean, you were in a, a, a ton of roles, ultimately in charge of uh, sales for North America. That's right. An ASU grad, Forkham. That's right. Fellow Sun Devil, love that. And for the last five years or so, you've been a board member um, for the uh, the 501C Celebrity Fight Night. That's right. A, a charity that, and this is this is amazing. Uh, that the, the reason that that charity exists, Celebrity Fight Night, is to eliminate sickness and poverty. <laughs> How cool is that? To eliminate sickness and poverty. That's right. <laughs> so you're a busy man. Plus, you're you're a husband and a father. So thank you, John, for making the time to share your insights today with, um, with our friends. I know that you've been, um, you've been fascinated uh, with you know, the power of the mind for your whole life, really. So what is mental toughness to you, John? Well, thanks, Chris, and thanks for everyone out there uh, paying attention and listening uh, today. And as you make your rounds, uh, hopefully this will help people clarify maybe a few key concepts and buzzwords and examples that people can take to their lives. That's what I'm getting a lot of gratification from is when people call me back up, send you a note and say, you gave me a little bit of insights to help me in my life. And that's what I take home now. Those are my whys and what I'm looking for in life. And so I hope to give you that. As you mentioned, a lot of years, 20 plus years, trying to solve complex problems in this enterprise software industry. So let me take a step back and describe that that world to you and your viewers and and then how that leads into why the mental toughness, why creating and owning your mind is so important. Um, I'm going to give you some real simple direct statements. The first is in the enterprise, in any software business, Chris, you only have two things. You have people and you have IP. That's it. And I would argue, property. that's right. You have your software. You know, the buildings, the, all the other marking, everything else is really um, a sideshow. And if you look at, in my opinion, to the amount of money, energy, and time we put into our people, it's nowhere near enough. So we build out these great products. We, we think it's intuitive for the market and the customers to consume them, but we don't understand how the world works, how adversity gets in, and all the things we need to do to really make sure our people are educated, trained, prepared, motivated to make our dreams come true with this IP or with this software. Mm. You know, we give a little bit of HR, we talk about things like engagement scores, but the reality is if you go look at where we're falling down, it's around leadership, it's around coaching, it's around discipline, mm. it's around mental toughness. Mm. Now let me add to that for a minute. I'm going to make the argument for you and your viewers that the software industry is the most competitive industry in the world, mainly because it's so innovative. It's so competitive. We are acquiring each other all the time. Mm -hmm. And because of that, Chris, we're attracting athletes into this industry, people who like the risk and reward that comes with that culture. Winner take all. <laughs> you could make lifestyle altering money or you could be out. And that's what athletes, what we're starting to call the corporate athlete, 
And it's why I think oh, you're yeah. making such a connection in the software industry is because the golfers and the hockey players and this NFL athletes that you're working with who want to be at their peak performance mm -hmm. do well here. They don't fear coming into a place where you can make a million dollars, as you put it, buy your boat or your dream yeah. and deal with the risk and reward that comes with that. And that's why uh, I would my first two points um, I wanted to um, start with were uh, the industry is consolidating. It's changing all the time. It, there are people are playing for high stakes, like high stakes okay. poker. So, so there are two ways that someone could hear all of what you're saying right now. That can be uh, s scary as hell or cool as shit. That's right. <laughs> it probably can't and be any of them. It's either one or the other. There's probably nowhere in between. So that's exactly where I was going to go. My, my notes, I put a couple notes together for myself, for your viewers. Because of just what you just said, that can lead to some really bad behavior. It can lead into fear. It can lead into um, uncertainty. You can become um, uh, skeptical. You can become, uh, feel under pressure. You can feel you don't have a future. You can feel I'm not in control. And you have this cascading um, side effect where if you take the first two points, right? We, do, we, we only have people and we don't invest in them very much. And I'm throwing them into this hyper competitive world <laughs> unprepared. And then we're going to go to my third point, which is I want all my people to be really, really productive. I want my people to not quit. I don't want them on LinkedIn looking for a new job. I don't want them talking to the therapist about how the world's out to get them and how the world, <laughs> you know, um, is evil. And we're watching Oprah and we're going and having drinks with our neighbors. And we're talking about how the world sucks and we're reading Us magazine and the world's in that negative place. <laughs> and yet, as leaders and owners and CEOs, we're saying, hey, I want my people to be really productive. I don't want them to quit. I don't want them to interview anywhere else. I want to make all these, you know, and I'm going to try to get by in the cheap in this highly lucrative competitive world where I only really have IP and people. And you have this perfect storm that's that's missing and needing what you do, what the market is demanding, which is I want the most mentally tough, stable, poised, centered, calm, thoughtful leaders in the world to take advantage of this and maximize it. And, and that's where I would tell you um, leadership, mental toughness yeah, is yeah. at the forefront. And just to give you some examples that are to your earlier point, if you've watched the show Billions, which most of your viewers are watching right now, they, they, the character there hires a full-time mental toughness coach. And the reasoning in Billions is, hey, if I'm gonna have these horses that are making us millions of dollars, you wanna have them at their peak performance all the time. It's a no brainer of an investment. Did you tell me about that show? Somebody yeah. agrees, it was you? Yes. I gotta record that. Yeah, all my good ideas that you have are mine. That's, you I'm, I feel I'm embarrassed that I even asked that question. But Billion University of Alabama, you mentioned sports, they have a full-time mental toughness coach. They want those kids, not only are they 600, you know, six foot six, 300 pounds, they want them mentally prepared to interpret the world their way. Those, they're looking for that edge yeah. and it's becoming more and more notable. And I'm simply here to tell you today that if you're a leader listening to this, if you're a manager or a VP or a senior VP or a CEO, you have to bring courage. You have to be in that, in that state of mind of all inness as you go and set quotas, if you go to agree to an operating plan and your board is on you and your investors are on you and you just maybe get intimidated and you don't go in mentally tough and you agree to a plan that you know your people will never be able to do, the whole thing breaks down before you even start. Um, you're so intensely committed to leading and to inspiring people into greatness, to getting more out of them, which, which by the way, was my late mentor's definition of leadership is getting the most out of your people. Did you ever meet Jim Myers? Never met him, read about him, knew a lot about him. Yeah, so, um, I, mean, you, I mean, you truly get that. You, 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 he always talked about you know, the, the most valuable resource 
that any company would ever have, of course, is the human one. That's right. And, and this is what you've been talking about all, yep. all, only so far today is investing in, in your people and getting the most out of them uh, because the, the intellectual property is meaningless without that. Right? And it's, well, just, like, it's just like the best talent. Like, you know, when I work with athletes, right, I, I've had the uh, privilege really of, of meeting many of the world's top athletes, but m many of them will, no one will ever hear of because they don't know it. So it's like they have the, the equivalent of the IP, in other words, the talent. They have the product, right? right. But, be, but they don't have the mind to make That's it right. valuable. So, 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 let, so can you ha succinctly, if that's even possible for you, yep. can you define mental toughness in your language? Yeah, I, I believe it's come down to the poise and calmness and centeredness to, to handle change and to interpret it and, and take advantage of it and make, make it yours. Wow. Wow. Roger that. So to take advantage of change and make it yours. And you use the word interpretation in there as well, right? That's right. So like, t talk to me a little bit about, you know, how did you ever, I mean, when, did, when were you introduced to the possibility even of like, of manipulating your interpretations, of, of getting, ex of, you know, of embracing, not just embracing, embracing changes. I hate that. I don't, even, I hate that I even just said that. Embracing change. No, it's like leveraging it, like man yeah. capitalizing on it, right? So when did you get turned on all that stuff? Well, you know, I think originally, you know, I was fortunate to have a mentor who brought me back to New York, got me out of my environment, brought me in a rotational job, and I used to bring him examples of emotional topics. And he did something that you do, which is he would pause you and say, is that true? Mm. Oh, that sounds like Byron Katie. <clears throat> to say that true. Exactly. And I, and I thought about that when you introduced me to her. But this guy, Greg Corrigan, who a lot of people know, you know, trained at IBM. He was at CA. He brought me from Arizona to New York. He kind of he knew I had potential, but he knew I needed to I needed to, you know, become a Jedi. You know, I wasn't a Jedi. I was a aspiring young Padawan who wanted <laughs> to learn the ways of the force and to use that analogy. That's a great and, analogy. And he brought me to New York. He said, you have all this energy, you have all these ideas, but you need to center it. You need to learn different lenses in your life. And that's why you rotate people to give them these different experiences. And, you know, he would never use the F word unless it was really strategic. He would never lose his cool, no matter how crazy the business seemed. He always had that centeredness. And when you would bring him an emotional topic, huh. his first response would be, is that true? How would you know? Show me evidence. And I think that started me down wow. this journey of, of, you know, maybe maybe my worldview needs growth. Maybe I have different lenses to learn. And I just started going down this path of intellectually becoming stronger and more wise and more poised, but yet not losing my energy and my convictions of who I am. And, and the second one was probably Mac Newton, who you and I have talked about, who kind of taught me the basic principles of Taekwondo, mm -hmm. which are very similar on how the world works and how your mind is so important and um, thinking about the quantum leap and learning about how the world helps you in ways you don't know. It, you Mac, just for that. a second, Mac Newton, that's it's so, um, cause people are watching this all over the world, but could you just, just for just a second, just like who is Mac Newton? Yeah, Mac Newton is a three time world champion Taekwondo uh, master. He lives, uh, he's like a seventh degree black belt, lives in Phoenix. He was the churner, you know, he was in Vietnam. He's had a life story. He's published seven, eight books. He teaches, um, he was the trainer for the Cowboys and the athletics. Oh, I didn't know that. So he, he brought Bo Jackson from his hip replacement back onto into sports. So Ricky Henderson writes about him in his books. And he just happens to live in Phoenix. And we've introduced him at CA. Uh, people listening who work for me at CA met him twice. So when you go into like a, I don't know if you can call it a workout. You call it a workout yeah. or a treat. Yes. So when you go into a workout with him, what, what's it like? It's intense. I mean, your first. How does uh, it start? You're in a 110 degree room. Uh -huh. You're sitting Indian style on the ground and you're thinking. You're just. And he's you're like just lecturing. Contemplating. He's not even in the room yet. You oh. just you're by yourself. And everyone's just silent. Just silent, talking to each other. He oh. comes in. You're in bare feet. You're, everything's yes, sir, and no, sir. Um, wow. it's, it's very disciplined. And then he speaks for about 20 minutes about goal setting. 20 minutes. You're sitting down. You guys haven't done anything physical yet, and he's just lecturing. Yeah. 
That's amazing. Share stories. So that, and that's, so that's, oh, that's fantastic. Integrity, you know, goal setting, self-esteem so is a common. interesting, right? So like mental toughness is such a, it's a very, so it's a loose term. And you know that I use the words mental toughness, the phrase, uh, to capture a lot of things. Like, I, like it's to me, that is, the, the term mental toughness is synonymous with enlightenment. And there's no exaggeration in that whatsoever. I mean, because the word enlightenment has the word light and lightness of being is intelligent, right? And it requires toughness to bring lightness into chaos. So it's all the same. It's the same as That's emotional right. intelligence, right? Emotional mastery, being a thought warrior, psychological strength. All these things are the same to me, right? So, um, so there's, you know, you can make the argument that, would you say that Mac Noon is a spiritual guy? Yeah, very much so. I think that whole Taekwondo martial arts uh, philosophy is based in this spiritual. Are you a spiritual guy? Yeah, you bet. So, um, so this is interesting. I don't think I've ever talked to anyone about this ever. What is the relationship between, or, 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 or now see the way I'm phrasing the question as I'm noticing as I'm saying it is kind of is a, is a sort of suggesting or is not sort of is totally implying that there's that there's that mental toughness and spirituality are two separate things because I was going to say the question I was just going to ask you so correct the, the question if you want to um, what is the relationship between <laughs> the two things mental toughness and spirituality as if they aren't the same and I don't know. You tell me. Well, here's my take on it that, that I think um, maybe a lot of people and you will understand. There's a point in spirituality where you surrender, almost like the Jedi analogy. You surrender to this process. You don't, I got this, no self-defensiveness, no ego. You need to surrender. There's, there's a bigger power at play. There's more at play here than you can see with your eyes. And you. And I like the word and Mac teaches it, you need to learn to surrender to the way. And once you surrender to the way, it allows you to do the mental toughness work because you understand it now. Even if you may not fully comprehend it, you because you're going to go after the work and you know it's coming, the enlightenment may take some time based on the exercises you do. You have to surrender that this way you've been doing things where you think you're in control of everything needs to stop. You need to surrender to the way. And the way is this new mental enlightenment process that requires a lot of work that people just don't want to do. You know, that reminds me, it sounds like Taoism. Yes. The way. Right? Yes. Uh, very much. Very so much. Very the simple. way, the force. <laughs> The process, the Star Wars work. analogy, like George yes. Lucas's, like you know, you know that he was, you know, I would love to have a conversation with George Lucas and say, you know, what we're, like, what does all this represent? Because you keep coming back to the the Jedi warrior analogy and the mentality, and that that's like so that that's like spiritual, the the Force, First. right? And when I see you leave rooms of people, and I see them taking notes, and I see them, I see them training to be Jedi Knight, I see them training to get promoted. What are these senior leaders? What are people looking for? They're looking for the poised, thoughtful, mentally tough folks to give more people to. That's the biggest gap. When I see people taking notes after you leave, they are training to become Jedis because they know that's how you help the world. You achieve your true inner self. They've surrendered to it. And they are, they are in training mode to be this bigger, spiritually, mental, tough person who ironically, they didn't think in the beginning had anything to do with their advancement in their life. And it's everything to do with your advancement in your career and in your life. It's the center of it all. How do you train your mind? Well, a bunch of ways. I mean, one of them lately has been, you know, you and I have set up, I, I, get, I get 10 to 12 text messages every day. And I get, you know, you are the That's best right. leader on the planet. Nobody can intimidate me. I have affirmations, goal setting. You know, I print out my attaboy, a girl, you know, from girl, men and women who have, who have told me like you have, hey, John mm. Hunter, you've made a difference in my life. So I look at those even when I'm feeling pretty good. Oh, you're, talking about, you're talking about this. That's correct. You got your this. Everybody should have one of these. Everybody that's listening, you have to have one of these. There's only one folder on my entire desk, always, and it's that one. 
acknowledge. And while we're talking here, maybe I'll even you know pull up my um, my text and give people an idea of how I do affirmations. You know, self-esteem and integrity is a core to all this. You have to tell yourself, I like myself. I like myself. I am the best leader on the planet. Our sales force is the best sales force on the planet. Mm. We make decisions around being great. We don't get intimidated by the Us magazine and the, and the water cooler talk and our quotas are too high and the CEO is trying to kill us and the product sucks and everyone's out to get us. And if you don't think about the things we need to do around affirmations and self-talk and reading and mentally you know, in, engaging ourselves to become better, then you are absolutely statistically going to be at the whim of the world and that is where mediocrity lives. <laughs> Woo! Amen. <laughs> Fucking love John Hunter. God so let me read Hunter. you and your viewers, right? <laughs> this is this is my phone. You can't see that. Yeah, but yeah, I'll... No, hold it there. Hold it back. I can put it back and just hold it for a second. Yeah, it says, made a difference in people's lives. John, remember to slow down. Uh, and John, people, what? Oh, okay. And Doug, I'm good enough. What is that? John, interpret life only in ways that serve you. Ain't bad, just is. Okay, right on. So you're getting, yeah. So this is the reminder, the revive me system. You're getting, so you, you're set up in the system <clears throat> that me and Dan Pause. Hoagland are co creating. Pause and relax. You're, so, right, so you're in a quota cool state. Okay, so that's, that's, that's pretty cool. I love that. Because um, I, I send them to myself too, and, and here they are. <laughs> they just showed up. So, um, the point of that is, okay, and I'm not trying to do a commercial for this service yet, yet, because <laughs> it's not even out. Uh, we're testing it. But the point of this service is to have automated text sent, right, to right. remind, and I love that word so much, remind, right, because we're like, we're retooling our minds. Yep. So we're remi reminding ourselves of the things that we feel are most important for us to keep in the forefront, of our consciousness throughout the day, and that's really a, lot, a huge part. I mean, that you could you could make the argument that that is mental training right there, it, right? Is manipulating the content of your mind so right. that so that it's serving you. Let me give you some real world examples for your viewers who are in sales or sales leadership. Beautiful, that's excellent. And who are thinking about that? Going, okay, now this is you know, John, you're taking us into the university. You're t you're becoming a medical student here. How does that really work for me? And let me give you some examples. First of all, it is chemically and technically true that the human mind has a neocortex phenomenon that it basically goes into fight or flight mode when your heart rate gets up and your brain gets stressed and scared. We make poor, you're at your lowest intelligent level. Chemically, physically, you're making bad decisions. Fight or flight mode. You're a sales leader now. Your end of quarter is not going so well. Your boss is coming over the top of you. You're interpreting sphere. You're going to make bad decisions. You're going in. You get a text message saying, John, live in the present moment. You're the best leader on the planet. People respect you. You cannot be intimidated. You go into those sessions with calmness and poise. You're not in fight or flight mode. You're going to handle it the way that you know needs to be handled with courage and discipline that protects your people. That influence is not only your people to the lateral of you, below you, but you're actually influencing your boss and the senior leadership saying, hey, guys, we got this. Here's our plan. We're going to work through this, and your, and your people are going to respond to it. The people above you respond to that, and you can get that trigger by just doing your, your mental toughness, preparing yourself with affirmations and reminders. And this is a good example where a lot of sales software cultures are failing. They're just going in with fear. They're responding to the whims of their neighbors and their bosses. They're cascading that down on their people, either yelling at them, you know, scaring them. Everyone, mm. Fought, mm. you know, kind of retreats into their hole, points fingers. And we wonder why when Chris Doris shows up and our other experts show up and they look at our people and they say, boy, this feels like a very average sales force. <laughs> where, you know, where is the leadership? Where are the Jedi's? Where is the balance and the courage? And it's very real in our industry, Chris. And leadership is making a huge, uh, making this problem worse, and 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 it needs to change. Wow, you know, another way that you're always um, growing is you're a voracious reader. You're always reading. You're always reading something. 
uh, and, and I totally admire that. Um, I think all the greatest leaders in the world are, are, are you know, addicted to literature, right? Uh, so, what are some of the just just give if you're going to recommend a few books for folks, uh, what might they be? Well, um, you know, there's a lot of self-awareness books, you know, a lot of what your crucial conversations, how to have these talks um, about with people around, you know, when it's chemically hard and we all have different styles. What, you know, what, are you, but, what are the books that you've, what are the ones you've read or what are you reading now and what have you read lately? Yeah, well, uh, right now I'm reading Strategize to Win, Carla Harris. And you guys just had her speak recently at an event that you also gave a keynote, which I'm actually going to be watching today. Yep. Carla Harris, for those listening, you know, she did an amazing job describing your currency. You want to have a great career, then you have to have performance currency and a relationship currency. Performance currency and relationship currency. That's right. Okay, so what does that even mean? Performance currency, maybe like a golfer or a business, you're hitting your numbers. It's easy to tell, right? I crushed my quarter. And a lot of people listening to this think that's their only job in life. <laughs> currency, you mean like accomplishment or skill? What's the currency? I'll, I'll talk about it. It's, it's hard. To, it's, it's one of those kind of nebulous forces in the world. Your performance currency is how others view you. John Hunter means a lot to the company because he hit his numbers last quarter. He has certain confidence levels from the company that John Hunter is a good and valued employee. We also take that away as our ultimate self-confidence. We'll say, hey, I'm a valued employee because I hit my numbers. Secondly, what she will tell you is that form of currency goes, is worth a dollar and it goes down quickly. It doesn't stay as a dollar. This is a big issue for your listeners, Chris. Wait, wait, you're saying the performance currency depreciates rapidly? That's correct. You bet. And okay. that blows salespeople away. They don't get it. They'll say, wait, Chris, my boss is a real jerk. My senior VP is a real jerk. They don't remember that two quarters ago, I really blew it out. And what so people you're like, need you're only to as good is, as your last deal. There you go. All right. Okay. So you switch that. Uh -huh. It's relationship currency. It's some of the mental toughness it's it's how are you listening and, and, and engaging other people are you how are you treating your employees are you listening to them are you building a safe environment do you know their birthdays are you genuine and authentic with your peers and your boss are you going out of your way to remind people how important they are to you are you doing gratitude moments are you being thoughtful or a bull in the china shop as you get shit done in your environment and this is referred to as relationship currency it's mm. worth three dollars and it doesn't diminish wow oh that's how fascinating you've just brought us full circle <laughs> right back to the human currency or the human um uh resource that's right that's super great man uh, i could talk to you all day about this we've done it before and we'll do it again uh, I totally appreciate your making time and sharing your wisdom and your, your energy, brother. Uh, I love you, man, and I thank you. You seriously have been um, instrumental, to say the least, in the uh, evolution of my career. And for that, I am forever grateful. So thanks for, for showing up today, brother. My pleasure, man. Thanks, Chris. Keep going. Right on, brother. Talk All to right. you soon, buddy. Okay, take care.